Hello and welcome back to some crazy Reddit stories. I'm Shane and today I'm joined by Courtney and visiting us, our former coworker, Sarah Whittle is Hello. here. Hello. Honey, I'm home. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. You sound, your voice cracked at the beginning of A that. Do we need bit. to take that again? Okay, you're no longer in charge. <laughs> okay. You sounded like you were gonna cry. Yes. And welcome back to Red Stories. <laughs> No, I'm very excited to be back. You guys know I love visiting you guys. And can you believe it's almost been three years since I left? Whoa. <sighs> three whole years. Soon I can't visit back because no one will know who the <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Who, who are you? <laughs> Aww. Wow. Uh, well, in honor of you being here, uh, we're doing work drama. Oh. All this is gonna be about work. So work bullshit. Water cooler tea. Here we go. Am I the asshole for pretending to get fired when customers get a temper with me? <laughs> Pretty awesome. Okay. Okay, here we go. I am a high schooler with a weekend job at a coffee shop. My coworkers who work weekends are James, the owner's son. He goes to my school. He's a shift manager, but it's not a real format, formal thing. He's a friendly guy. Danielle, a college student who sometimes works weekends too. So sometimes customers will come in and just be uh, angry about such little stuff, like literally blowing up about nothing. I don't know if they're in a bad mood already and looking for someone to take it out on or what, but it's a lot. Like, how sad do you have to be to be a grown-ass man t taking your anger out on a high school and college kids? So James and I were joking about having a little fun with them and hopefully getting them off our backs. So one day I was at work and some guy was having a temper about how we don't make the coffee hot enough, which I couldn't do a thing about because I gave it to him right out of the machine. <laughs> So James came in, I was like, sir, is there a problem here? And the guy started ranting at him too. So he was just like, OP, this is unacceptable, you're fired. I started acting really sad, like, no, please don't fire me. My family <laughs> needs the money, I need this job, please. And he played up being a hard ass, telling me to take off the, my apron and leave. The angry guy started to backtrack, like, it isn't that big of a deal. You don't need to fire, fire her over it, I didn't mean it. And James was like, no, we pride ourselves on the best customer service. Of course, after all that drama, I still had my job. We were just acting, and we've done it a couple times. Whenever a customer will lose their temper at Danielle or I, James will storm in and fire us. <laughs> and almost every time, the person who had come in angry will apologize and say they didn't mean it. It's kind of satisfying, making people realize their actions might actually have consequences. Anyway, I was telling my friends from school about this, and a few of them thought it was a mean prank to let someone go away thinking they'd gotten someone who desperately needs the money fired. Mm. Am I the asshole for this joke? Hmm. First, first of all, it's, it's a little funny. It's funny. <laughs> I think it's really funny. I think it's super funny. I think they could take it up further. I think if they can pull the acting off, because I think if I were to do it in my real life, I wouldn't be able to keep a straight face of like, <laughs> no, please, I need this job. Like it would, so the fact that the acting is convincing enough to make these customers feel bad for being kind of a Karen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is like good chaos. This is good. Oh yeah. yeah. Because what are, what are people expecting or hoping for when they come in with that energy of like, my yeah. coffee's not hot enough? Because like a lot of like, like if, you, if this was a Karen, it's like, it's a superiority thing. Mm -hmm. And getting, you right. think like getting someone fired is like their dream. But and maybe it's just like, and maybe it's a good lesson for them to learn, like yeah. the, like little complainy thing, like make your coffee at home if you're really gonna be that freaking right. particular Garrett Palm, like if you're gonna. Be <laughs> <laughs> no one shaded Garrett. I'm just kidding, but like he's a very nice person, I'm sure at coffee shops. But mm -hmm. if you're gonna be that particular, make it at home. Right. Or just like deal with it. Also, like coffee hot, like McDonald's got sued for that stuff, so. Also, coffee's not that good, like super hot. I'm an iced coffee girl. Same. Yeah. No. I yeah. Mean. I wonder, like, what happens if one of those customers comes back another weekend? And they're still there. But maybe they feel good about it because they're, they're like, like oh, oh, yay, like the God. person didn't get fired. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, wait, oh, right. Oh, right. I forgot to fire him. Oh, I'm going to get fired again. <laughs> I also think when you see young people working, like clearly high school, college, like sometimes this is like a side gig. Most of the time it's a oh. side gig to either have like extra money or help at home or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, are you really, like you're really gonna come in being like a Karen over like, uh, this is not like 
a corporate environment where it's like we strive for excellence or like anything right. like that. Mm -hmm. It's a coffee shop. Like chill, chill the f out. Exactly. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to see the validity in saying that OP's an asshole for this. I don't think he's an asshole. Hey, no, I don't think or so she, either. I don't think they're an asshole. They're yeah. just saying like, oh, it's a mean prank. It's like, well, yeah, because the supposed don't be Karen. mean to the Karen can be mean, but we can't be mean. That's true. I also think it's really funny. I think it's it really funny. funny. I, I really would love I to see, see a performance. Yes. Uh, the verdict was not the asshole. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Uh, <laughs> not the asshole. Customers can be fucking dicks. Usually people are pretty respectful and reasonable, even when they have a legit complaint. But every now and then, there's the one guy or gal that comes in and just can't be made happy. They're the worst. Someone else said, not the asshole. Fun fact, uh, Harrods actually hires people for this. If a customer is upset in the store, the manager will call back the offender and fire them in front of the customer to satiate them. Then the guy whose job it is to be fired just goes back to the back room and waits for another customer to get angry <laughs> so he can be fired again. I think it's even better that you're using it to make people think twice about being a-holes in the store. Wait, they have in-house actors at Harrods? In-house, like people that you, that, people that get fired. <laughs> I love it. How do you write that on a resume? I actually want that job. <laughs> That's like, it says here you've been fired 5,000 times. Like, I didn't know we had a coffee shop theater. Yeah, like, this is wow. so good. Yeah. Uh, someone said, everyone sucks here. The customers are obviously assholes for being assholes for no reason. Yes, you are a little bit of an asshole. Is it justified? Absolutely. Are you still an asshole? Yes. Unfortunately, in a customer service role, you are always going to have to deal with people who are angry over absolutely nothing. It is part of the job. Is it fair? No. In a perfect world, those customers would not exist, but we live in a reality that is part of the reality, uh, especially for that job. Eh, that's kind of giving the customer's always right vibe. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, they're not. you're not actually doing anything wrong to the customer. Yeah. You're, you're, you're technically giving into what we would assume is like, what do you want? Right. And I know this is not a hot take at all, but like, you know how some countries have like mandatory military service? I think like mandatory customer service jobs Ooh. would be a thing. Like it's good character building. Like you, yeah. you know, I've worked in retail stores. That was whole character building. I've worked in so many restaurants, character building. But then it's like, you really understand like Karen's like yeah. you get a grip. Totally. Get a grip here. Yeah, you had to deal with a lot of nightmare customers. Yeah, yeah. And like I, one time I worked at a beer garden in Phoenix and it was mostly beer garden and the kitchen was like probably smaller than like the one toilet bathroom here. Wow. Like that's how big the kitchen was because it was just like sausage and fries. Damn. And so when the whole restaurant was filled with like 50 tables of people wanting food, like Obviously, the one cook in that tiny ass <laughs> kitchen was like shelling out all that food. And I remember one customer, he ordered a beer. I gave him the beer and the food wasn't coming out in like 20, 30 minutes because the whole restaurant was full. And um, he was I went to his table. I was like, so sorry for the delay. Like, um, it's coming soon. And he goes, my beer is warm. And I was like, yeah, because it's, it's been sitting there for like 20 minutes. You can you can chug it right now. And he was like, no, I'm waiting for my food. OK, like, what? He wants to glut You're at the beer garden, down. sir. Like, uh, and then one time at an Italian restaurant, I forgot to give like the people the appetizer or something like that. It was like my very first serving job, and um, so at the end of the meal, I was like, "I'm so sorry." Like, and I didn't know you could comp. I was like 16 or something, so I was like, "I'm so sorry." Like, here are they to here are the the rolls to go. You can take them. And he's like, "We don't want them anymore." They never reminded me either that these were like late, and then on the tip receipt <clears throat> he put like rolls on the tip line i don't understand it so it was just like you know i was like i was just, I was just like 16 years old I mean, so oh yeah yeah the weight of the world is is on teenagers at their first job <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i i worked at a play place as my first job and there's a lot of rich mean moms yeah. oh boy yeah so Oof. you know rough danger zone all right moving on here we go. This comes from Malicious Compliance. Oh. Cameras have to be on no matter what. Fine by me. Don't mind the pump. Is this a poetry thing? Maybe. 
I'm a project manager and data scientist. I manage lots of different public health related projects. There is one project in particular that includes a really demanding team from a federal government department. I recently returned back to work from maternity leave. I work in my office three days a week. On those days, I have to pump breast milk at regular intervals, intervals for my baby. Luckily, I have my own private office and can usually just keep on working, emails, reports, etc., while I pump. I have a hands-free wearable pump, which is convenient, but still definitely obvious if I am wearing it. It pokes out uh, about my shirt and is not exactly silent. Recently, we have a Zoom call scheduled during one of the times I needed to pump. Instead of missing the meeting, I figured I would just keep my camera off so I could wear my pump and still participate and listen. Heck, I was even in my office and not working from home. I felt like I was being a pretty committed employee. Meeting starts and a few people have their cameras off. The lead makes the announcement. I just want to remind everyone that our expectation is that you will have your cameras on because this is not a virtual meeting. It is a, it is a simulated in-person meeting, whatever that means. I sent a quick private message to explain I was paying attention but pumping. No response to me, just instead a, again, the expectation is that all cameras will be on. So fine, I turned my camera on for this meeting for about 20 people. The camera isn't aim aimed at my chest, but certainly the top of the pump is clearly visible. I unmuted myself so you could also clearly hear the pump oh my and just said, thank you for your patience, I was adjusting my breast pump. The meeting continued awkwardly with several other team managers letting me know privately it was fine to turn my camera off. Huh. But at that point, there really was no point in turning it off. Uh, at the most recent meeting, the announcement was, please turn on your cameras if you are comfortable doing so. Aha! Well. Yeah. Um, I, do miss, I do miss virtual meetings, like <laughs> constant virtual meetings. We had so many over the course of the pandemic mm. and uh, they were so silly sometimes. Yeah. I remember we had like our Christmas. Our Christmas party, like our virtual Christmas party for 2020 is like the, fu it's the funniest thing. It was so insane. Yeah, like um, Santa joined. Yeah, we got a Santa in person. Oh my and, God, and that's right. I remember how hard Brittany went. Like Brit Brittany was like. <laughs> Did someone like ask if he believed in God or something? No, they, they asked, <laughs> we started asked, asking Santa crazy shit. Brittany asked if Santa gives gifts to all the children of the world, why do the poor children get worse gifts? Oh my God. Oh. I knew it was some fun. And this Santa, I, Santa gave like a generic answer and I was like, this is brutal. Oh. But then also we um, FaceTimed with a sheep. Yeah. In England. Yeah, we got a sheep. That had like a crazy name, like Daisy or something. Yeah, that's a crazy name. It was pretty cool. And then we did Secret Santa over the Zoom call too, so everyone unwrapped Yeah, <laughs> we did our best. We really did. Yeah. And not a single breast pump in sight. No breast pump in sight. I will admit, now that years have passed, there were definitely plenty of times where I was in a meeting my camera was off and I would just be doing shit in my apartment. I would just have it there. I'd be listening, but like, I'm like, I'm not speaking in this meeting. So I'm just gonna be, I'm doing dishes and stuff. I don't like the like mandated be on camera thing. No, that's weird. I think that's super weird. However, I'm a vibes person. So like during the pandemic and then even with my like new job, I would like make a point to like be on camera just to like give the vibe of like, hey, yeah. let's like be engaged and, and present if we can be here, especially like as a leader in the group. But I think like the peer pressure thing is too much. I think like this mom in particular, may, not an asshole, I think in my opinion, cause it's, it's a little bit of like, um, what is it like, um, Kind of like breaking the rules, but to make a very good point. Yeah, what, did the, what was the title? It was Malicious Compliance, it was right? Mil it was Malicious Compliance. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's like, you made your point, but like, ugh, uncomfortable for everyone involved. I feel uncomfortable for everyone involved. Yeah. Except I mean, for the asshole that was saying, you have to be on camera. Right, yeah. it's a weird policy. Yeah. They had to learn the hard way, it sounded like. Cause yeah. like, cause she, she tried to let them know that she, she was like, "Hey, I, I, I'm in this, I'm in yeah, this situation didn't here." Yeah, understand, and and so, what's the point? Yeah. Like, what are you winning by like forcing these people to be on camera? I, it's I, I don't a think. Control thing, I think it, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's a control thing. Whereas I think it's like, if you want, if you're having remote calls still, being on camera is like to me, I think is more of like a vibe thing. And if you can do it, you can do it. If you can't, you can't. That's right. okay. Right. Some comments here. 
This is not a virtual meeting. It is a simulated in-person meeting. <laughs> yeah. My head hurts from I hate figuring that. this out. Uh, someone else said, I work at a university and all of the faculty complain that their students don't turn on their cameras. And then we have a department meeting and none of those f***ers turn their cameras on. I am in person simulating. <clears throat> simulating person meeting. Good evening. Guys, we're simulating a, a, a voice call meeting. <laughs> right now. That's the vibe. How's everyone doing? Simulating a chat. How are we today? <laughs> uh, lastly, someone said, I read a similar story about a student un undergoing chemo who was told they had to have their camera on. <sighs> they had also privately messaged a professor to ask for a, disp a dispensation explaining why. No response. Just a group message, cameras on or you'll be marked as failing. Okay, then <laughs> camera on, cue shocked Pikachu face from the professor who had <laughs> insisted on cameras being on. People are just, ugh. People are just, ugh. I think it's like those, you know those people, like those those professors, those bosses who just like, they want to have that like little bit of control and it's like super toxic. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah. this is obviously a very easy ask, turn your camera on. But like, if you put human into it, if you put empathy into it, like it's really just them trying to control and that's when it gets like really mm -hmm. icky. Yeah, and I think a lot of them have this element of distrust for their employees. Yeah. Where they're like, she's probably lying. So no, we, you gotta have it on. And it's like, oh shit, you weren't lying to me. Yeah. It's like, well, maybe just trust him in the first exactly. place. Exactly. I'm the type yeah. of person's like, what you give is what you get in the universe. So it's like, if you're giving out distrusting vibes, like, then you're not gonna have the, the, the respect and the trust back. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Good as Hershey for deciding to keep it on despite being told that she could turn it back on. I mean, shout out to moms. Like, that shit takes balls. Like, oh, yeah. that is like so vulnerable. That's supposed to be a private health thing. Like, moms go back to work so early while they're still making milk. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a badass. Like every mom's a fucking badass and this mom's a badass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And she's a scientist? What the and hell? And a scientist. Smart, hot, and pumping? <clears throat> Smart, cool. hot, and pumping. Pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Next story. Am I the asshole if I don't want my husband shadowing me at work? Okay. This is recent. This is from like a couple days ago. <laughs> This is going to sound complicated, so stick with me. My husband, who's 44, and I, 39, have been married for 20 years, but the last few years have been incredibly rough due to multiple issues, such as our sons both going through major health issues. One issue is that I feel like he's smothering me, and when I tried to explain that to him, he became furious and started yelling, telling me how awful I am. Oh. Our entire lives together, we have worked together the majority of the time. Almost always, that means separate departments and little interaction. When I say this, I don't mean all in one place. I mean, I started working at a major retail store and a few months later, he started there. Oh. I started my degree and the next semester, he started his, identical to mine. This went through two degrees. I am now in grad school and sure enough, he's asking me to start the process of going to get him enrolled. When I gained my bachelor's and began working at a museum career, uh, he began volunteering there on his days off but would take over tours and conversations. When I told him to stop, he blew up and said I'd embarrassed him. When I took a second job at a factory, he also wanted to work at the factory. I quit the factory, as planned, last month because I just wanted extra Christmas money. He got mad because he said I abandoned him there. He's oh. since quit and gone back to the retail job, but all he does is complain. The manager at the factory and I still talk, and she said they'd accept me back any time, but pretty much said they don't want him back. I am still working at the museum and have started substitute teaching a couple days a week. I love it. Now, he wants me to help him get started subbing, and I'm trying to avoid it. He asked if he could shadow me one day, and I told him no due to security. He messaged the principal and got permission <gasps> easily and was pissed that I hadn't even asked. I am trying to avoid it, and he's saying I'm an a-hole for not taking him with me. Oh. Is he right? Oh, uh, okay. what the f*** is going on this here? Is brutal. That's... I've never heard of anything like this before. I mean, where wow. he just literally follows her to every job and gets uh, her job also. It's I'm, been happening for twenty years. They've been married twenty years. That's so interesting. Uh, I don't think she's the asshole at all. Like, what the hell is he doing? No, but, I mean, she's expressing her boundaries. But this, I, I'm. That's. It's like definitely giving like younger brother energy. Like it's like. 
if you had like a younger sibling that like when growing up when you're like seven, eight, nine, like yeah, they just my little brother there. would like copy everything I did. Right. And that's like, you know, you're at that age, you're trying to like define yourself and define, you know, find yourself and you don't want this like little mm. kid copying you. But now that they're, they're like in their forties, married 20 years, like, oof, that's like, that's tough. And I think it's like, you know, and maybe it's like just different attachment styles, but like I've been married for five years now and it's very important to have two separate lives outside yeah. of the marriage because it's like you're still two very different people. And like that, I think that's like always a tough thing is like when you're married, you feel like, oh, we have to do everything together. We're building this life together, right? This like big thing together. But like ultimately it's two separate people that need to find their own happiness yeah. within the umbrella of marriage. And so for me, if I had to like, work with the person, eat with the person, sleep with the person, then vacation with the person, then weekend with the person. Like for some people that might work, but like for my marriage, that wouldn't work because I still have things I want to do mm -hmm. on my own. And like, so, you know, you need a little time apart, like too much time with one person. That's a lot. And it's not even just, it's not even just like they're in the same place. It's like, I started my degree and the next semester he started his identical to mine. Like, it's like, what does he want? out of life. I can't help but like feel like it comes from a controlling place. That's what I was going to say, but I don't have no psychology degree from ASU online, but <laughs> doesn't do anything. <laughs> but it really does it feels like because the the to get to the point where OP is taking museum tours, giving tours and him going there and like taking over and then for her to fully within her right express that she mm -hmm. doesn't want him to do that and him him blowing up at her. Yeah, or like emailing is, the principal when she's like yeah, that it, teaching. That's going like, behind her back. That is controlling so behavior. rude, yeah, it's yeah. super controlling. No, it's disrespectful to her. It's, it's like he doesn't want her to have her own life. Yeah, and I can understand like she feels like uh, the asshole because she's like, ugh, I like kind of want like a distance from my husband. Mm -hmm. Like, right. I think that's like not naturally what you think you should think, right. but like, it's just feeling very clingy. Yeah, I had a friend who was in a really tough relationship and she had like basically a full-time job at a real retail store. And it got to the point where this partner would drive her to work, wait for her at that mall and take her home, like just was, just needed yeah. to be around and aware of her at all times. And it was really scary. Like It probably comes out of insecurity, right? But yeah. it's, it's very much like, the it, you know, sometimes when you hold on to something tighter, it runs yeah. away like cats, like the whole, you know, oh, yeah. you're trying to, yeah. you're trying to oh, be like, yeah. cat, I love you. And it's like, I want to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So like, you got to let the cat come to you and like right. that kind of thing. So I think this, this might be a situation where he might be thinking like, no, I need to be in every part of her life. Mm -hmm. because we're married, but it's actually like creating more tension and distance. Yeah, it's interesting too. They have like no official agreement on this. Mm -hmm. It's just something he's done forever. Yeah. And he's gotten comfortable with that mm -hmm. envelope yeah. being pushed over 20 years. Like that's, she, and it sounds like she's over time a little bit tried to, tried to set a boundary and he's just exploded at her, yeah. which that's what a, a person will do if, if they're narcissistic or if they have any kind of issues like that they will make it a horrible experience when you try and set your boundaries so mm -hmm. that you'll never try and set a boundary again. Mm. And like, it can be really tough. And for that to be going on for 20 years and she just like doesn't know what to do anymore. It sounds like it's getting to a wild level. Yeah, yeah, already, yeah like. for sure. Um, well, the verdict was not the asshole. Uh, some comments. You don't need to ask him to go to therapy with you. Just start going yourself and he will follow you and volunteer. Funny. Go like he has done with everything Hell else. Yeah. Yep. That's very true. That's a very good piece of advice. I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I, That's messy. These are big things. These are very like big he's things. willing to work anywhere. This is work and personal drama all yeah, the time. Yeah, that's everything. This is a full Sunday. All of it. Smokes. Okay. Next story here. Am I the asshole for telling this college guy's mom that her coming into his interview cost him the job? Oh. He brought his mom to the interview? Mommy says I can do this job. Uh, here's my recommendation. Yes, he's a very sweet boy. 
and uh, he's good at everything, you know. When he, when he was second grade, he drew the most incredible picture of a horse. He started walking at 10 months. That's like a couple months before you know, all he the You can ride a bike. Oh, and you should hear him sing. <laughs> sing, Mikey. <laughs> Go. Mom, stop. God, she's the worst. I am a hiring manager at a tech company, and I was hiring for summer internships a little while ago. Oh. We had a guy, about 19 years old, applying for a summer internship between his freshman and sophomore years of college. It was a virtual interview over Zoom because of COVID. A minute or two in, when I was introducing myself, his mom came in and introduced herself and started talking about her son's work ethic. I thought it was a little strange. I said something polite about wanting to hear from him. She just didn't get the hint and kept coming into the camera frame during the interview and interrupting her son to answer questions for him. I asked a few technical questions, which he seemed to answer well, and then cut the interview fairly short. I thought that that was all over and done with until I'd gotten an email from a woman a month later asking about her son's application. What? She seemed offended he hadn't gotten an acceptance or rejection. It bothered me. I felt bad for the kid, honestly. Way back when I was a teenager, my mom used to pull the same shit, but luckily she only did that when I was 15 and working for a day camp, not when I was mm -hmm. a, an adult applying for engineering jobs. But I felt like this poor kid was getting his chances ruined because his mom wasn't giving him the chance to apply on his own. I sent an email back saying I was not at liberty to send information about an application to anyone but the applicant. I also asked HR to send an email to the kid saying, sorry, but we were not making him an offer. It is something we usually do, but his rejection email must have slipped through the cracks with all the COVID craziness. Anyway, after we sent that, I got a phone call from his mom. <gasps> she had a forwarded copy of the email and she was demanding answers. Oh. I said that I could not comment on the guy's performance in the interview with her as she was not the applicant. If he wanted to reach out to me, I was happy to give him some feedback. Mm -hmm. However, I could say that regardless of his performance, her presence in the interview took him out of the consideration for the position. We were looking for an independent and self-driven person for the position, and for that reason, it is important to see an applicant speak for themselves, follow up themselves, etc. I also said that as a piece of advice, every hiring manager I've met in my career who sees someone other than the applicant answering questions during an interview, following up on the applicant's behalf, et cetera, uh, would also put their resume in the do not hire pile. Since while the applicant may be skilled and motivated, they need the ability to demonstrate those traits themselves. She fucking blew up at me over that, kind of cussing me out to the point where I hung up. <sighs> Am I the asshole for how I handled this? Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut way earlier. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's the asshole for that. No, yeah. no, I'm actually surprised that, like, he replied to the mom. I know. The way it, I would have, like, He was actually being kind. That. Yeah. yeah. Being kind. I wish there was a way for him to say that stuff to the son. It's like the scene in Step Brothers when they're, like, both interviewing yes! for the position. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sure he would have preferred that. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be so tough to be yeah. in that son's position because... Like, imagine what, t well, like, I don't know. It just seems like he's living at home, mm -hmm. can't get any privacy. This this manager, OP, well, did that like very well and very yeah. technically explained why that wasn't the way to do it. And I applaud them. Yeah, I think OP went above and beyond. Oh, absolutely. Maybe there is a, le there is a lesson there. <laughs> um, to learn of, you know, not all, you know, n not all good deeds go unpunished type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think this person was like, yeah, I really want to like help the guy and give feedback. But like, mm -hmm. I think we've all experienced like a unself aware mom. Yeah. yeah. And like, this is exactly what this situation sounds yeah. like. Not yeah. Not energy. This poor kid. Yeah, I feel for the kid. Know, this mom is just la like not giving him a break. Yeah. I, I, what I wished, what I hope this guy does in the like, if, if for some reason this ever happens again, is during the interview, be like, I'm sorry, nobody else is allowed to answer these questions. Uh, like, see, I'm sorry, I this see, is a job. It's no different than if you were in a job interview in person and someone else walked into the yeah. job interview, you'd be like, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you, this applicant has to be by themselves. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. 19. Yeah, yeah, rough, yeah. rough for the kids. Probably I'm, like I'm sure he. I'm sure the kids upset about it too. Probably yeah, so like, embarrassed. Just doesn't, Truly, but doesn't. I, I think it's like a, it's a tough age because yeah, he's super young and trying to get his own footing in his life, and but he's yeah. still living at home with mm -hmm. his mom, and mm -hmm. this mom is clearly very controlling mm -hmm. and like, 
I, she that's not normal behavior in any sense not healthy behavior no. as well to be emailing on an adult this guy's an adult man mm -hmm. he's being but back. he's being treated like a kid and yeah. like there's that self-fulfilling prophecy of like when you treat someone that way like you're his parent and you're treating him that way yeah but you want to don't you want him to grow up and yeah. be an adult, but you you're treating him like a kid? Push like, him out of the nest at some point and let him let him like, fly. Give him give like respect him. Yes, exactly. And be like, oh yeah, you're gonna go kill that interview. I don't need to be in there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. she's not doing that, and that makes that's gonna make him feel insecure. I'd feel so insecure. Like, do you think that mom shows up on dates too? Like he goes I mean, on dates and she's like, why won't you my, my son Jimmy? is so sexy, uh, and you're like, what the? F oh, what the f Jesus! Dude? Like, what the hell? Yeah. Try to move out if you can get a job. Yeah. Oh. I mean, just let him. Just it's let him. Cycle. Just let him get a job. Yeah. Just like let the him like. He, it's not even about moving out. Just like let him live his and it's life. It's not even like for like an ice cream shop. It's an engineering job. I know. Yeah. And they they asked him technical questions and he knew. He did him. him. He's clearly capable. Sucks. Uh, the verdict was not the asshole. Uh, one of the comments here, not the asshole, it's probably better for the kid you told her directly, seeing as she clearly does not respect him enough to believe him if he disclosed she cost him the job. She snapped at you because you gave her feedback that point, painted her in a poor light, and she thought she did her son a wonderful favor. Mm -hmm. You're probably the first person in a while to stand up to her. Uh, someone else said, not the asshole. Helicopter mom needed to be put in her place. Hopefully she <laughs> learns. Sadly, while I think it's a shitty, it's shitty someone gets put in the d do, do not hire, hire pile, for something like that, I can completely understand why. Hopefully the young man can solve that issue and get hired somewhere. Lastly, someone said, bruh, not the asshole. I feel so bad for that poor guy. Not for the job per se, but for his controlling mom. Uh, but you just did your job and she deserved the cold shower and a reasonable dose of humility. I just don't know if she's gonna learn. I don't know if that, she sounds like a mom that's like gotten feedback. I don't think she's ever gonna change though. Yeah, yeah. Is my, my just like. And if this was like, they said it was during COVID time, right? So it's like, if she's interrupting the interview, she's gonna be interrupting every meeting going forward. Mm -hmm. That's oh true. Oh my God. Yeah. You're hiring her. Yeah, <laughs> you really are. That's awful. Who knows, like this manager giving her that feedback that she may or may not have received, made her blow up. Odds are he heard that phone call. Seems like they're near each other quite a bit. <laughs> but like, hopefully that could have been some kind of catalyst between the mom and the son to like yeah. change the rhythm of things. All right, moving on. Am I the asshole for telling someone that his achievement just meant that he had rich parents? Oh no. Uh oh. Here we go. I, a 23 year old man, have been with my current company for a year now. Recently, a new guy, Jack, joined our team fresh out of college. Last Friday, my manager invited everyone to a bar after work. There, Jack told everyone about an achievement that he, he obtained over spring break. He visited his 150th country, Cambodia. In contrast to everyone else who were asking things such as, what was the best slash worst slash strangest thing you ate? <clears throat> Which countries were your favorite? And any cool stories? I just said, good for you, and went back to my drink. Jack noticed me being quiet and asked why I, I wasn't joining in. I said, don't worry about me, but Jack kept pressing the issue. I finally said, Jack, visiting 150 countries is cool and all, but it doesn't say anything about you as a person. It just means you had rich parents who could afford to travel internationally several times a year. I grew up poor, literally, worked my ass off in high school, got a full ride merit scholarship, and did everything humanly possible to land my current six-figure job. Rich people who think they're better than everyone else just uh, because they had rich parents is a huge pet peeve of mine. But my coworkers don't know any of that since I like to keep work and my personal life as separate, separated as possible. Jack got really quiet after that and left soon afterwards. Now it's Monday morning and I'm wondering if I should have just kept my mouth shut. Mm. Um, I think there's, I have two thoughts here. One is, yeah, the reality is he definitely only visited 150 countries because he grew up rich. But also, it's not like he was sitting there. He Just gives, checked a box he doesn't, and went back home. He doesn't say that Jack was going, yeah, I visited 150 countries and I'm better than all of you. Yeah, and I did yeah, it all by yeah. myself. Yeah. Like, it does, this does read as like, resentment and just like Yeah, the way he's shitty. like kind of saying the story is it felt like Jack was like, ask me anything. I went to 150 countries and everyone's like, kind of like fawning over Jack for like making this accomplishment when maybe that's that could be the vibe or maybe yeah. people like, oh my God, what is the craziest thing you ate? Or what is the like- Yeah, it sounds like people- Your it, favorite place. Cause those would be questions I would ask. He's he, The way he's stating is like, uh, 
everyone else just started asking those things. He just stated, started. I visited 150 countries. Yeah, but yeah. then the OP was like, cool man, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and Sounds then drank his beer. cool. <laughs> I and mean, then I was like, I don't give a shit. That's kind of, it's interesting. He's like, I've been here for a year. And like, I this is me definitely like plugging in my own assumptions, filling in the gaps of being like, maybe yeah. he's, he's, he's no longer the new guy. And there's this other person who's so cool and interesting. Cause like, just, I know, listen, rich parents that you, when you boil it down to it, that is probably likely the reality. I also like, you know, Garrett has been all over the world and it's, and, and like, has so many stories. Yeah, and that's really shaped who he is as a person. And when the, it's a new guy, like we, how else are they going to get to know this guy? Right. It just doesn't seem like he was. At no point does he say that Jack was saying like, like boasting. He wasn't boasting. Like he that, just yeah. was saying, "Hey, this is a yeah. thing that I did." Yeah. Um, and regardless of how he got it, like it could be, he, he and maybe Jack yeah. would even be like, "Yeah, I had rich parents. And yeah, 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 a lot." Either way, like traveling 150 countries is not something many people do. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a lot. I've only been to a, a handful and I would be fascinated to talk to someone who's traveled mm -hmm. to that many, regardless of how they did it. And 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 maybe that, it, it, I'm sure it's it's probably like money and, and fortune have some sort of play in it, but it's like, I lived all around the world and I'm a military kid. So it's yeah. like also too, to like make the assumption just because right. they're rich, it's like, I lived in Germany. I would go to the Netherlands for dinner. We were not rich. We were on like, you know, a, 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 like a pretty low salary at the time. I lived in Korea. I've like been to a lot of places, but that doesn't necessarily mean I was, I was well off too. So I think right. it's like, the OP seems to be like jumping to a lot of conclusions and maybe bringing their own little like, you know, baggage yeah. and animosity. So I think like if you're all coworkers kind of having a drink and the person's like, hey, you, what's wrong? Like your vibe's off. Like maybe not the time and place to like kind of let yeah, that he just, come he, out. He just he seems like he's jumping to ways to make Jack feel not good. Exactly, and I think if it's like, if, if, if you felt icky in the moment or you're like, ugh, this is like, I'm a, I'm a type of person that's like, if, you, if your hater is coming out, like maybe remove yourself from the situation. Yeah. Like if I'm a scrolling on social media and someone I'm following like brings out a hater in me, I'm like, you know what, maybe, maybe that's something I need to work on. Maybe I can unfollow this person and just like, cause I don't want to have, I don't want to be a hater. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, because I don't know people's situations. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going based on what information he's got here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he just doesn't give us any quotes from Jack that make it sound like Jack was trying to rub it in anyone's face. Mm -hmm. He was just like. It's a f I also hate fun facts. When it's like, let's go around the room and everybody say your name and like a fun fact about yourself. Like I never know what to say. Yeah. I yeah. never, because I, I even either. three so, truths, yeah. one lie. And I, and you know, I, I worked here. We had to do games like that and I hate playing those games in real life. Right. Yeah, I also think it's tough. Like when you grow up in a low income situation, like a lot of people do kind of have a like a bitter feeling like, you know, and it can affect like your relationships with people. And it's sad because like that could have been a friend. That could have been a potential friend. Yeah, man. They definitely are getting off on the wrong foot. Um, and yeah, like his his feelings are real. Like he's, he's, I don't know if he's just bummed that he hasn't been able to, to do those things or there, there could be many reasons why he had that reaction. I like the, the, the hater. The, the hater thing, thing. Though, yeah. If it yeah. brings out your hater. Maybe get away from it. Mm -hmm. um, it's also just like this for this for OP. I'm like, what? Are, what are you getting out of this? What? What's gonna? It's just like bumming yourself. What's out. gonna happen? Yeah. Like yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Now you're sipping. And then now you have yourself. like tension with that person at work. So it's like yeah. something with like um, what is it, like mandatory fun events with work. And it's so funny because I'm like I'm friends with so many coworkers, but then you have like a work happy hour, and the conversation just turns like very stiff and weird. It's like oh yeah, how was your day? Yeah, it was very good. <laughs> good. Like, yes, like a uh, mandatory fun at work. So it's like simulated fun. While yeah, <laughs> personal personal simulated. Fun um, so I think like while you know you should go to happy hours or some work kind of function, you can kind of just show face and then totally. dip out. Like that's kind yeah. of all you need to do. Um, yeah. Cause some of it is like a little bit of like a, P a self PR thing. So it's like right. if you're feeling you know you're on this mandatory fun thing, you're feeling the hater come out. You can like finish your beer, check out an Irish goodbye. Most of the time you don't even have to say goodbye, and then you know. Write in your diary or on Reddit how much you don't like this rich kid. <laughs> uh, the verdict was asshole. 
uh, some Wow, cool. okay. You're the asshole, so? Visiting 150 countries is really cool. There was no need to shit all over it and make a stink. He never said he was better than anyone else. You just assumed that because of your own insecurities. 25,000 upvotes. Wow. Someone else said, going to 150 countries is an achievement, like it or not. And Opie responded to that, saying, an achievement should be something that you worked hard for, not something that just falls into your lap. Oh. 1,400 uh, downvotes. So also, hold on. He's 23 and says- Making he six figures. Six like, figures. I'm like, dude, good. you did great. Like, you're, you're doing, insane. you're killing it. Yeah. Uh, that's insane. Yeah. You can visit 150 countries over the course of your life. And also, like, if this 23-year-old's career is going to keep going in this, like, pretty sweet oh path, God. your kid's going to be the spoiled little kid. Ooh. And then, full circle. And then you're going to hate him. And then you're going to hate oh, him. Oh, no. Um, Lastly, we have a comment here that says, not the asshole. You tried to disengage. You said congrats. He wanted to press the issue. I don't know why he cared so much about what you thought about it and why he kept pressing it. Maybe he could sense you didn't care and his ego couldn't handle it. Just spitballing here. But you are not in the wrong. Uh, you, but you are not wrong. Going to 150 countries by the time you reach your early 20s does just mean he has rich parents. And I mean, good for him. That must be sick. Uh, <laughs> That was sick. I wish that was me. I that would be freaking sick. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I see. I can see where this person is coming from, but this is all based on how things were said mm -hmm. and what was said at this event. This, if I was there and hearing this, my opinion would probably be oh, a hundred percent different based on that. The truth is somewhere in the middle. I'm going based on what he what what yeah. he wrote here, and based on this, it just doesn't sound to me like Jack was being. And it's actually curious to me that Jack asked, like, hey, man, you okay? Like, what's going on? Like, you're, Yeah, that's just, he probably was being you're, you're pissed off. Being it's, like, probably sense, yeah, definitely like, could see the energy yeah. shift. And then, yeah. I'm the type of person that's like, if there's a group of 10 of us and one person's like clearly not, not, not vibing, I'd be, be like, involved. hey, are you okay? Like, what's, yeah. what's going on? Do you want to talk about it or something? Yeah. Weird. Bummer town. Yeah, bummer. Here's our next one. Am I the asshole for demanding my coworker pay me for a ride to work after many months of giving her a free ride? Oh. All right. Okay. For the last 14 months, I've been driving one of my coworkers to and from work. She only lives a mile up the road from me and is on the way, so I've never asked her for a dime or accepted when she's offered me money. From my perspective, I'm going there either way, and her overall household expenses are higher than my own, so it felt like the thing to do. Over the weekend, my car went to the shop. I told my coworker that I wouldn't be available to give her a ride either Monday or Tuesday. She said it wasn't a problem because her boyfriend is off this week and would give her a ride. I asked if I could bum a ride as well. I even offered to walk to her home so they wouldn't have to drive backwards. She asked her boyfriend about it and he said he, he, said he would, but he wanted $20 for the two days. Oh. I know it's just 20 bucks, but that set me off. I declined the offer and said I'd find my own ride. At work yesterday, she asked about my car. I told her I'd be getting my car Tuesday night after work, but that was that going forward, I'd like $30 a week, a third of my gas costs, if she wanted to ride with me. She was upset about this and said her boyfriend had only wanted money from me because by having me in the car, he was being forced to drive straight home when he picked, her, when he picked me up. I pointed out that I've been happy to drive straight home to help her out for over a year and that it probably wouldn't have killed him to show me at least some level of appreciation. Today, she said she's no, she'd no longer be riding with me after talking about it with her boyfriend. She said she felt disappointed with me for holding his actions against her and that I was being petty. A couple other coworkers told me throughout the day that her boyfriend's just an asshole and she doesn't really have a say, doesn't have a say at home, but overall agreed with me that it was a dick move. From my perspective, this dude directly benefits from me thanks to his girlfriend not needing a car of her own or spending a dime in travel and my coworker should have defended me. Do you all think I'm being petty about this? That's a little bit like wild. I think it's a little wild. I think like girlfriend, girl should have maybe talked with boy her boyfriend about it like hey he he never charges me for like a ride yeah, so like he's been like, doing yeah. this solid for a year for a long time i've offered money he won't give it so like it's just one weekend like i'll give you the money or whatever if it's that big of a deal so i think like the girlfriend's not totally like in the clear in in the situation mm -hmm. here and then i think like op 
understandably was frustrated, but the like, okay, now you have to give $30 a week. That's like a little, it feels a little yeah, dramatic. I would have just been like, I can't give you rides anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's it, what sucks ultimately is that her boyfriend is a huge douche. Yeah, yeah he yep, seems yep. like that's what sucks yeah, here that's is what like it is. he his car was in the shop. It was just like, can you just like sh yeah, like you said, just having her if she had been like, hey, do you would you be able to? And I wonder if she did, and he was like, it's no. like are the the is the boyfriend and the coworker like directly talking to each other? And he was just like, give me twenty dollars or like what. A few days of driving one mile is yeah. like kind of, and it's because his car was in the shop. Expensive. His car was in the shop, so he told her like, "I can't give you a ride." Yeah, and she said, "Fine, my boyfriend's giving me a ride." Yeah, and then he was just like, "Great, could I bum a ride as well?" And then the boyfriend's like, 20 bucks." I'm like, "Jesus!" <laughs> like he sounds like an '80s like jock. I need a of cigarettes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I get that he's pissed. I guess what I see is like. He's pissed, but he's taking it out on her. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I, that's where I'm a little like, okay. Yeah. But I, I will say, like, OP being like, he should show me appreciation. He's like, no, I'm not involved in that situation at all. Why should I appreciate you? But right. he's been doing, OP's been doing his girlfriend a solid. Yeah. And, and like, boyfriend hasn't been having to worry about yep, yep, anything. Yep, yep. Yeah, there's all this conversation of like showing me appreciation and stuff. I'm like, to me, it's not that deep. It's just a matter of like, come on, guys. Like, just be yeah. cool. Yeah, just be like, cool. Just give people a ride when they ask just for it. Like cool one month. Like even it. if even if he wasn't uh um even if he hadn't been giving her a ride mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and he was just a coworker of hers and then she was like, Oh my coworker, his car's in the shop. Do you mind if we give him a ride? Yeah. I'd be like, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's just a nice thing to do. Yep, yep, yep. Especially also, when you're like carpooling for yeah, yeah, together. Just do and that. Like, OP offered to walk to their house. Yeah. Yeah. And was still being asked to pay. It, yeah. It sucks. I, do, I I think like instead of like the $30 surcharge all of a sudden, yeah. I think it'd be like, "Hey, like I I I think like what what happened with your boyfriend's like a little awkward for me." So I think I just prefer to like drive my on my own. Sorry, yeah. man. Yeah. Like no hard feelings. That's yeah, that's totally fair. Yeah. I think like yeah. to just um, Instead of being like thirty dollars now a week, it's like yeah, Ooh. I feel bad for her in that situation. She just but yeah. she should have kind of like facilitated the negotiation. yeah she could yeah. yeah. Um, so it's two people doing her solids mm -hmm. right. Um, see, let's see. Uh, the verdict was not the asshole that that he wasn't he wasn't an asshole for how he went about sure, all of this. Sure, sure. Um, comments petty yes asshole no. <laughs> Yeah. While she can blame her boyfriend, she went along with it. She should have explained to him how for over a year you gave her free rides and asking mm -hmm. for money was tacky for him. But she didn't. She just went along with it. She showed you what she thought of your kindness and friendship. Mm -hmm. You're just showing her the same, not the asshole. Someone else said, not the asshole. This is truly wild. It sounds like it's her boyfriend who is the A and not really her. That's how I kind of feel. Yeah. Mm. But if my boyfriend made such a request after a year of little free rides, I would be mortified that. and would never repeat it to you. Maybe she has some alarming relationship dynamics, but either way, you are not doing anything wrong and I would argue that you weren't even really that petty. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like like it's like you're saying, like just be cool. Like not not everything needs to be transactional. Mm -hmm. Transactional. Transactional. Transactually. <laughs> Transactionally. <laughs> like the, cause and also it doesn't need to Yeah, it just sucks when it beces like a one two punch. Like you it just you like blew screw up. Me, now I'm gonna just yeah. screw you back. It's just like, douchey. When someone's in a situation like that where it's like, hey, I don't have a ride to work, it's like just give someone a ride. You know they're a good person. They're yeah. someone who has helped out someone you care about. Just do them a solid. Yep, yep. It's not that hard. Yeah. All right. Next up. Am I the asshole for telling my coworker to stop using my personal belongings? Oh. Love stories like this. What is the personal belonging? Hmm. hmm. A tampon. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> you done with that? <laughs> Sisterhood of the Traveling oh, Tampon. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So I, a 28-year-old woman, okay. uh, have been working at this small software company for about three years now, and I genuinely love my job. I have great coworkers, and the work environment is generally positive. However, there is this one co coworker. Let's call her Sarah. Oh. Oh. A 32-year-old woman who has been oh. increasingly crossing boundaries. I don't work at software. 
<laughs> it's not you. It's not her. It's not her. A bit of background. Sarah joined the company around a year ago, and we were initially friendly. We would have lunch together occasionally and chat about random things. I didn't think much of it, and it seemed like a normal office friendship. Sarah sounds awesome. <laughs> However, over time, I noticed that Sarah had started to use my belongings without asking for permission. Dear Sarah. For example, she would take my stapler, pens, or even my phone charger without asking. At first, I brushed it off as her just being forgetful and not realizing that these were my personal items. I tried to be understanding and not let it bother me. But then things started to escalate. One day, I brought in a special lunch I had prepared as a treat for myself. It was a dish that my grandmother used to make for me, and it had a lot of sentimental value. I had placed it in the fridge with a note clearly stating it was mine. When lunchtime came around, I discovered that Sarah had taken and eaten my lunch. <gasps> I confronted her That's and she crazy. apologized, claiming that she thought it was meant for the whole office to share. I didn't buy it, but I let it go to avoid causing a scene. I thought it was for the whole office. So How I big ate, was the pot? I ate the whole thing. It was for the whole office. She so brought I the ate whole it. crock pot into the fridge? Wow, this is for the whole office, right? Well, I am the whole office. <laughs> uh, but then, uh, let's see. Over the next few months, Sarah's behavior continued to worsen. She began using my personal laptop without asking, even though we all have our own work computers. She would also use my coffee mug and other personal items, despite me having my name on them. I tried to address it politely and asked her to stop, but she would just laugh it off and say she didn't mean any harm. Finally, I reached my breaking point last week. I had bought a new expensive pair of headphones to use at work, and I had left them on my desk overnight. When I arrived the next day, I found Sarah using them at her desk. I was furious and asked her to hand them over immediately. She tried to play it off as a joke, but I had enough. I told her that it was not funny and that she needed to stop using my personal belongings without permission. I said it was disrespectful and a violation of my privacy. The rest of the office heard the commotion and some of my coworkers agreed with me, while others said I was overreacting and should let it go. Sarah hasn't spoken to me since, and the atmosphere has become tense. A few coworkers have even suggested that I owe Sarah an apology for embarrassing her in front of everyone. So am I the asshole for telling my coworker to stop using my personal belongings? Nah, Sarah's the asshole. Oh. Yeah, Sarah's, yeah. A, Sarah's a huge asshole. Sarah's the Definitely. biggest asshole. I, I feel bad for OP because like they did try and gently say, hey, stop. And then for Sarah to just be like, ah, it's okay, it's just all good and fun, is is tough. But I, I, I would, that was I was a great Sarah impression. <laughs> 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 I, I, it's I, okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. It's, it's all good. Okay. It's fun. I thought it was mine. Oh, is that for the whole office? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, what I would have done in OP's position is like maybe go to HR, and then yeah. HR could make like a grand statement to everybody of like, hey, everyone has their own personal belongings for their job. Please respect and everybody use your own so that mm -hmm. we can keep track of who has what. And this is definitely like right. an HR. Yeah, yeah could have been. Offense. Because she's not the asshole for how she went about it. But there is a way to do it while protecting yourself mm -hmm. in a workplace. Yeah. I mean, I think she's fine. It's always so it. embarrassing, though. Like, it, the, the lunch thing's, like, out of control. That's crazy. And I'm like, where do you get the audacity to do that? Like, that is crazy and like like your point if it was for the whole office why are you heating up the whole thing and eating it yourself yeah. but to me it's like it's always so confusing to me when people act this crazy in a professional environment where it's like I know you have a job I know your job and like you're acting like this is just like the wild yeah. and you can just kind of like claim your territory that's always been like so bizarre to me when like I hear stories like this it's really bizarre I've personally too. never I've personally never had knock on wood I've never had my lunch stolen by like Good. a coworker. That's the most comical I'd be so sad. A, like invasion of privacy I've yeah. ever, I, whenever I've heard those stories online or in TV shows, I'm just like, that's insane to me. And the audacity of people too, the entitlement, because there's been a lot of stories we've read where people are having their lunch stolen and then they like add a bunch of spiciness to it or something. Oh yeah. And the person like tries to sue them or like, yeah. like gets upset at them. And they're like, this is your fault. It's like. You were taking shit. You're from taking that. my food. I don't understand. Yeah. Like re respect people's mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. And office supplies, like a, like a laptop, like that's serious. To or me. the headphones too. Yes. Like that's crazy. Like if final I, straw. Yeah. Reasonably so. And then uh, the way I'd be label making every single thing to say Sarah, but not that Sarah. <laughs> on my shit. <laughs> I am that Sarah, but I am not that, that Sarah. Yeah.
Does she have a? Does Sarah have an H or no H? No H. Wait. Yep. Okay. They're no, there's an H. There's an H. It's just like you. It's just like you. It's just like you, and this is what you were like. It's giving Sarah the bad name. The comments. Not the asshole, but you need to go to HR. Yes. Nineteen thousand upvotes. Like when you're when you're lucky and you got a great HR situation, like that's awesome. HR period would have so much helped in this. I also feel bad, like she literally nothing was able to be sacred to OP. Like yeah. like this would have the only way that this per person could have continued to protect their peace would have been to like get a safe or something. Right. Yeah, like, get, like lock it away. That's insane. But also, yeah, you go to HR too to cover your ass because then you can say, I went to HR about this. Exactly, and then yeah. if something isn't handled, then it's like, yeah. hey, get that I, can, trail. I can now show yeah. that this didn't happen to my company, let yep. me down. Yeah, 100%. or, or if, if you weren't ready, if they weren't comfortable to get HR involved, email Sarah and be like, hey, um, I, I understand, like, I love that you're comfortable. As like, discussed today in the in office, like, I'd appreciate it if yeah. you didn't, like, eat my lunch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, my name was clearly labeled. Hey, uh... yeah, yeah. hey um, bitch. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. No. Um, no, it's smart. That's smart thinking. Uh, someone else said, not the asshole. The headphones slash lunch were yours and not hers. While I would argue using a stapler isn't harmful, it just adds to everything else. What is stapler. what is most irritating about her seems to be she <laughs> tries to just laugh it off and carry on like she hasn't done anything wrong. Don't apologize. Wait for her to do that. Uh, someone else said, worked in an office once where the coworker's lunch was repeatedly stolen despite his name on the container. His lunch was kept behind my container with a sign that read, eat someone else's food, expect a write-up. Got to the point where he just put a slice of moldy bread in the container, and I packed lunch for two. Uh, oh. Damn. Aww. I don't, that's crazy. So that person kept getting stolen from no matter what. No matter what. To the what. point where they had to rely on somebody else. Okay. That's that's personal. I would bring my like own cooler if, if the communal fridge was unsafe. <laughs> God, but that sucks if the communal fridge is like to that degree. I know. I can't See, believe people do you that. You gotta do what I do and just, my do lunch an... is just really shitty and gross. I would rather someone take $5 from my wallet than to take my meal. You know, I, food is precious to me. I don't That's like my stuff personal getting priority. stolen from Stealing, no. period. Wrong, period. I would, I, but food I would, is sacred to me and special to me, and that's like really intimate. Sometimes that's like the highlight of my work day, honestly. Here I say yeah. highlight of every day, period. I, I meal prep, so, you know, I would know, like, if, if someone was stealing my, my lunch, I would know because they'd get really fing jacked. And I'd be like, hey, I'd be like, hey, Brendan, you're looking pretty buff. Like, I think you've been eating my chicken and rice every day. And he'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he'd be like, what? <laughs> He grabs the camera and breaks it in his hands. I'd be like, hey, you need to stop, Brennan. <laughs> what is like a typical lunch for you then that you meal prep? I, I'm not kidding, it's chicken and rice. But like grilled chicken and uh, I roast, rice? I roast the chicken. I actually throw a ton of seasoning in it. I just, just, just throw, I just throw the whole cabinet at it. So I'm throwing soy sauce in there, soy paste. Oh. I'm oh. throwing oyster sauce in oh. there. Okay. I'm throwing um, pepper into there. I'm putting some uh, some Korean so chili it's flakes in there. not as boring. I would take that food. It's not boring. <laughs> it's just, but it's. Me, Sarah, would steal but that it's food. Just, it's, just, it's just chicken and then white rice. It's like, it's it. just that. Like, Got it. If someone's stealing that, it's like, dude, you, you, you can get that. Easily. I want Shane to cook for me. Yeah. He hasn't Aww. cooked for me yet. Yeah, we've cooks. always talked about cooking. I love cooking. 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 I know. No, my goal for this year is to make try to make soup dumplings at some point. What happened to the splits? Uh, I failed. Oh. Oh, you just given up? Not fully. Interesting. I, I'd still love to do it someday. If you actually, I'm pretty slipped. close. I know oh. you actually you actually started around the same time I. If I had there. balls, they'd touch the ground. Wow. That's how close I am. That's awesome. Isn't it awesome? I love that for you. If I had little tiny balls. If I had little <laughs> tiny balls, they touch the ground. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Okay. Here's our final story. This one's beefy. So this comes from Pro Revenge. My boss stole my Super Bowl tickets, so I made him lose a major client. <gasps> um, what year is this from? This is from 2023. Okay. Whoa. So this is the Chiefs Eagles Super Bowl. Um, all right. <laughs> you just knew that. Yeah, he yeah, likes football. Remember? It was it was a year ago. Football guy. Okay. I told you how I was supposed to date Travis Kelsey, right? She was supposed to. She was legally supposed to. I me. I had just had to sign a paperwork, you did and tell I would have. Tell me about that. Yeah. You could have dated Travis Kelsey. This close. 
you could have been doing your era's tour right now. Sarah is the Taylor Swift of LinkedIn. <laughs> That's so like, <laughs> That's so messed up. With the NFL playoffs back on, I thought you all might enjoy this football-related revenge story. I'm a huge 49ers fan, the rabid all-day tailgate in the parking lot type. A few years ago, we made it back to the Super Bowl. I was working at a consulting firm with a handful of accounts I would interact with directly. I just want to point out this is from a couple years ago where it was the 49ers versus the Chiefs, okay. but not this recent 49ers versus Chiefs. Wow. I'm going to go. No. <laughs> One client in particular knew how big of a Niners fan I was. I was the day-to-day -day lead on his account. He really liked working with me, and we became friends, often grabbing drinks or dinner after our meetings. He had access to a pair of extra company seats to the game, and as a thank you, wanted to give them to me as a gift. He passed the tickets over to the partner on that account, who I will refer to as Dickhead Partner, to be given to me as a surprise. The game came and went. We lost. It sucked. The next time we met, we went to drinks afterwards, and he mentioned, hey, by the way, why didn't you go to the game? I heard someone else was in your seats. I asked, what game? He said, the Super Bowl. Confused, <laughs> I answered, I didn't have seats to the Super Bowl. He told me that he gave Dickhead Partner a pair of his company tickets for me as a gift so I could attend. I had zero idea what he was talking about. He looked shocked, told me, uh, he told me to quietly ask around about it and get back to him. When I was back in the office the next week, I found out through one of the secretaries that Dickhead Partner had given a pair of Super Bowl tickets to another one of his clients as a gift <gasps> from our company. Interesting. I might have let this sort of thing go to keep the peace under different circumstances, but these were seats on the 30-yard line to see the fucking 49ers play in the Super Bowl. I was pissed. I considered confronting Dickhead Partner myself, but realized it was the client who had noticed I wasn't there in the first place. Aww. So if I let him handle it, there would be no blowback on me. So I texted him, hey, I just want to thank you so much for thinking of me with those seats. It appears that they were given to another one of our firm's clients. He texted right back right away, in all caps, are you shitting me? And then, pretend I never told you, let me handle. He followed up with me about formulating a, a plan. A few days later, we were asked to come down for a meeting in their office. The client requested the partner be present, not entirely unusual, so Dickhead Partner and I hopped on a flight the next week and headed over to their office. Little did Dickhead Partner know, my client had orchestrated a wonderfully awkward little show to catch him red-handed. When we entered the conference room, it was all the usual suspects along with a woman in her 30s we didn't recognize. My client immediately introduces Dickhead Partner. This is Stephanie such and such, VP from other department. She wanted to sit, sit in on this meeting. Hey OP, you guys must already know her from the Super Bowl. She then responds as she goes to shake my hand. Oh, I don't think so. Did we meet there? I'm sorry if I forgot. Client responds, geez, Steph, how much did you have to drink? They were sitting right next to you. Client looked at me and I say, sorry, client, I wasn't there. Are you thinking of someone else? At this point, dickhead partner is looking visibly uncomfortable, probably trying to come up with an excuse. He starts in with an, um, when Stephanie says over to him, uh, no, so-and-so from other company were in the other seats. By the way, I was wondering why we gave company seats to those guys. Is there a project we're working with them on that I don't know about? Obviously not. They were in completely different industries. It would be like Coca-Cola partnering with John Deere. <laughs> Dickhead partner like... Honestly? That would be <laughs> sick as f***. Pretty lit. <laughs> this is a Coke tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly? <laughs> Dickhead partner lets out an uh again, and the client immediately speaks over him asking, Dickhead partner, I gave you those tickets for OP? At this point, Dickhead partner is turning bright red. He responds, Ooh. oh, uh, well, he wasn't able to make it, so he must have given the seats away to someone else, and turns to me looking for me to cover for him. <gasps> Yikes. Client smirks at me. I responded, uh, what are you, what are you talking about? Client, you, you gave me tickets to the Super Bowl? Client suddenly raises his voice. Dickhead partner, those tickets were a personal thank you gift from me to OP. Oh. Did you give them away to someone else? Pause. Was it another client? Dickhead partner butts in with, oh, um, maybe something got mixed up in the office. Client went quiet for what probably seemed like an eternity to dickhead partner. He then looked down, grabbed his portfolio and iPad, put them into his briefcase and said, I think this meeting is over. OP, it seems as if I owe you a thank you gift. Let's go to lunch. Stephanie, you're welcome to come, come join. 
Dickhead partner, I need to reevaluate our relationship. Please go back home and expect to hear from us that next week. Ooh. Dickhead partner suggests he would like to join, presumably to do damage control, and Stephanie sternly tells him, I don't think that's a good idea, and asks the front desk to see Dickhead partner out. As soon as he is in the elevator, we all break out laughing hysterically. Stephanie wasn't really a VP, just an employee at the company. <laughs> client had drafted into helping with this pre-planned meeting skit, but she did end up coming to the lunch with us and was a fellow Niners fan and a total blast to hang out with. <laughs> Fun fact. On our way to the restaurant, I got a desperate text from Dickhead Partner saying I needed to cover for the firm and that we could discuss things when I got back. I replied, yes, we need to talk, but I'll see what I can do. Client told me to wait a couple hours and then respond to him. One, to expect invoices for the resale value of the Super Bowl tickets. Resale is way above face value. It's over $10,000, as well as our lunch. He picked a pricey spot and made a big show of overspending, and that he expected them to be paid immediately. Two, expected I be given a direct apology. Three, expected a written apology to his company for what he considered theft. And four, he will only interact with me or another one of our firm's partners, never dickhead partner. This whole thing caused a stir with the other partners, and I actually came off looking great because it <laughs> appeared that I had made a good faith effort to save the client for the firms despite being the victim in this situation. The client would transfer to another partner, which meant Dickhead Partner lost his profit share on any work with them. Oh, and the other partners in the firm made Dickhead Partner pay the invoices back uh, out of his own salary. Ooh. In retrospect, I really have no idea what the hell the guy was thinking. Did he seriously believe the client would just not notice me not thinking, thanking him for the Super Bowl tickets? Anyway, the well was kind of poison for me there long term because Dickhead Partner wasn't going anywhere. I left the firm a few months later for a much better position. <laughs> Client ultimately terminated their relationship with that firm a year later. He actually now works with a good friend of mine at a competing firm. I'm still pissed I missed out on the Super Bowl, even though we lost. Hoping, <laughs> hoping we make it back this year so I can finally go, uh, to, go to one in person. Go Niners. Uh, go Niners. We are filming this, like, Three days before the Super Bowl. This is a so. I hope this guy Go having Niners. a good time. Uh, this whole story is giving Ocean's Eleven yards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like this. Got him. I got Brennan. <laughs> this is like the coffee shop high school kid, but like grown up. Yeah. This is like the whole. <gasps> yes. area. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay. So Stephanie pretended to be the VP of the client and was like, yeah, I was at the game. Why Where were you? you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. That's some Ocean's Eleven. That's got to be right devastating there. to learn about an incredible gift that you almost had and then was literally taken from you and given to an, an, another client. Huge But also, gift. this is like a huge, yeah, it's like this a is, huge This is huge. I, uh, Super Bowl tickets, as far as I always assume, too, it's not just that they're expensive. It's like they're impossible to get. They're impossible to get. I think the Super Bowl this year, just to walk on the field, because they have, like, standing room only, I guess, for the Super Bowl, just to walk into the stadium is $8,000. Yeah. That's what I heard. But, like, it's, like, that it's kind of thing. But I just, like, don't understand where Dickhead Partner really thought, like, he was that slick, that he was, like, going to get away with it. Because it's, like, it's one thing to be, like, a bottle of wine or something like that. But, like, this is so big. Yeah. I wonder if it's that he just thought, like, I'm so powerful, what the f*** are they going to even do about yeah. it? Yeah. Or I think, or maybe <clears throat> there was a lack of thinking because they were just, like, oh, this will make... A gift like this will make me look really good yeah. to, to my other client and solidify mm -hmm. my relationship with that client. <laughs> uh, I guess we got some information here. The OP is in the ticket queue for this year's Super Bowl. <laughs> Aww, oh, yay! Yay! yay. yay. Um, 49ers! <laughs> uh, some comments. Imagine what sort of human being you have to be to essentially steal a $10,000 ticket from a worker. Disgusting, to say the least. The level of orchestration and execution on this revenge was so perfect, though. Suck it, dickhead partner. The worst part is that had OP actually been at the game, the 49ers probably would have won. <laughs> that's how it yeah. works, okay, as, every, as every football fan knows deep in their heart of hearts. Yeah, that's funny. Said, Holy crap, I can't imagine the logic in giving the tickets to another client when the gifting company would likely have other staff in attendance. Yeah, because they probably have like a box there, so it's like it's always like the same few people with maybe a few right. guests that show up. So like you probably yeah. become friends with like the area that you have. But back to like you know what you put out there is what you give. Like uh, I had a friend, a coworker, many years ago say like you know what money you lose 
will come back and then the same way like the money you steal will go away so I think like this is the exact kind of scenario of like he kind of stole those tickets and now he's having to like reimburse them with his own money yeah. like I, I really believe in that stuff. What you put out there is like what you get back. Yeah, yeah. and like company gifting stuff, I'm, I'm like, it makes sense that, that it is grounds of like company theft because like that was right. that was like that company spent money or you know there's no such thing as a free launch. Gave those tickets and dude, it was freaking. And a lot of companies like I don't know about firms and like legal stuff like that, but a lot of companies have like anti-bribery and anti-gift clauses too that you have to like watch and sign with HR. So like taking these large <clears throat> gifts, you know, depending on your company's policy can really be against company policy because it's kind of like a way to influence it. Interesting. Yeah, because so if, if I had a lawyer and I gave them a gift, you know, like thank you for negotiating for me all these years, you've done great work for me. But for a lawyer to give me a gift mm -hmm. feels different. It That's does. where it gets a little like mm. shady, like, hmm. so. Interesting. I don't know. Have you ever gotten revenge on a coworker? No, I don't think. Didn't you find that bag of shit under your chair <laughs> that she put? No, I've, been I've just left it there. <laughs> That was that was like a gift. <laughs> that was a revenge. Mm, gift. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think I've ever had like a a very very bad experience with a coworker. No. I wasn't there when all the like crazy stuff with Defy happened. Yeah, <laughs> I once had a coworker who kept trying to set me up with customers at our oh. job. Oh, uncomfy. And it was very like yeah, it was very assertive, and it did it was uncomfy. And I I I was super young, so I didn't have like tact yet and I was like you need to stop set me up with men stop it and she was like <laughs> you need to stop again. setting me up on dates with men <laughs> <laughs> damn Shane uh, I would never get in trouble with anything Shane is so it's a, like Shane's yeah. just like Shane's that guy Shane's that Sarah I mean but not that Sarah not that Sarah I'm not that Sarah <laughs> you are that Sarah no before we go, Sarah, do you have a favorite Smosh work story at all? Ooh, any, any sort of favorite thing? You just want me to, hmm. Or if anybody know. does. Yeah, what, we've had so many memories I mean, together. everything, yeah. everything. Yeah, I remember, sorry, I'm gonna <clears throat> steamroll. Okay, okay, go. I remember when Smosh had been abandoned and then Mythical bought it, and then we literally were so happy that we got you back on the team that we literally went out and partied. We did, we yeah. did. That was really nice. It was really nice to come back. Um, that was so nice, yeah, because it was like, it was a moment where we really didn't know the future of Smosh, and mm -hmm. so it really was like a moment where we were all like, you know, we gotta do this together, because like, we're better together. So like, let's just genuinely, like, we don't know where the f this is gonna go. If it's <laughs> gonna be around four years later, or five years later, like, let's just band together and like, do our best. And like, it's amazing. Like, I'm, I, I am so proud of what you guys have done. And Anthony's back and- I know, and It's like, it's come full circle. And so, yeah, I think that was a really, really nice memory. Mm. I look I, and I, I still watch videos. I still go back. I like watch it fondly. I forget the shit that I've said. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I was in that video. I was in that video. But like, I was yeah. waxing people when they I, got some <laughs> words wrong. I feel so grateful that I like, I still can very much like look back on this place as like my home. And like, I miss you guys so much, but I'm so happy for you guys too. Like, I really, I really did what I set to do three years ago was to become a fan. And so like, so That's proud awesome. of you guys. Aww. Hell yeah. Yay. I don't wanna cry. Don't. You guys know I Don't cry. cry. That's other Sarah behavior. <laughs> 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 um, all right, well, Courtney, Sarah, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, Sarah, where can people find you now? In the fridge. No, stealing food. <laughs> <laughs> Holy bread. No, I'm in the same place I've always been. Rude Unicorns on Instagram and TikTok. I don't post a lot, but I do post sometimes. Okay. You know, you want to see my cats? You miss my cats? They're still around. Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here, and thank you for watching. Let us know what other themes and subreddits you want us to cover on this show. And we'll see you later. Goodbye. Uh, don't be a Sarah. <laughs>